Hello everyone, I'm Jesus Martinez, your host for Around Sam, where we talk about things happening all over campus. And today we have a special guest. We'll be talking about the Diversity Leadership Conference happening today, so more on that here in a bit. Welcome, Akai, to the show. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing pretty well. It's a little cold outside, isn't it? It's, it's freezing. <laughs> Studio's freezing, too, but the, it's okay because we're going to be talking about the Diversity Leadership Conference. So uh, before we talk about that, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role within CIDIA. Okay. And what is CIDIA? CIDIA stands for the Center for Diversity and mm -hmm. Intercultural Affairs. We are under student affairs and student activities. We deal with, you know, the diversity cultural celebration events, and we host events to facilitate inclusion on campus, and a lot more. So what about, what do you specifically do in CIDIA? Well, my role as co-executive director, I oversee our eight student council. Mm -hmm. So it's a eight body student council called Diversity Council. And we are the ones that plan the celebrations. We are out on the yard handing out t-shirts. We're making informational trifolds, edu educational components. And you know, we're the ones that's trying to get the student body engaged in diversity celebrations mm -hmm. and you know, cultural events. So by the looks of it, it looks like City is a good department to join. So let's say someone on the university is a student, maybe a freshman who wants to maybe get involved in the organization. How do they join? Well, we have a diversity ambassadors component along with diversity council. It is volunteer based. It doesn't, it's not a paid position, but our outreach director within the council works with our student ambassadors and they, you know, they help us out with our events. We're gonna have a few of them in the leadership mm -hmm. conference that we're gonna talk about later. And yeah, so you know, just follow us on Instagram, SHSU Diversity, and DM the page, and then that's how you usually get involved. Perfect. And then with that, how does what kind of services does your organization provide to the student body and the university as well? We provide a lot of, I would say, like training services. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of our volunteers they come in to our different events, like a chat and chew, for example, where we are having a discussion about the culture of that month, so like Hispanic Heritage Month, and we'll have. Chick-fil-A and conversation nice. about, you know, how we can better help our Hispanic students or how we can better educate ourselves on Hispanic Latinx culture. And then our volunteers, you know, would come in, facil facilitate the discussion, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, helping out. So, you know, getting the Chick-fil-A together or handing out T-shirts after the events. So just like they're kind of like the right hand man of the council. And that's usually what they do. Perfect. And then you said speaking of food, you said Chat and Chew was one of them. I heard Chick-fil-A around there as yes. well. These are just some of the incentives you guys bring in to the events and these specific events. What other things do you guys involve yourselves in within your in the university? I know you mentioned Chat and Chew, uh, the Leadership Initiative. What else? What other programs are there? We have um, heritage celebrations out on the yard where we provide information about that culture as well as, you know, give out T-shirts. We also have a lot of luncheons with, you know, different faculty and staff around campus. Those mainly serve as a way to start the conversation on DEI work and how we can be a more inclusive campus. And we also, you know, we partner with the inclusion office to host like, you know, more events like the longest table and things like that. Okay. And yeah, we offer a lot. There's like a lot I can say, but you know, I hope you guys see it around campus. And for those who don't know what DEI is, what is DEI? It's diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so, you know, diversity is kind of the umbrella term that we use when we talk about inclusion. But when you add equity and a part of that, you make it like it's a connecting piece. So without diversity, you don't have the equity and inclusion. And without inclusion, you don't have equity. So you need all three of those to really create a great environment on campus. Perfect. And then this weekend, you guys have your 18th annual leadership conference. Can you tell us more about that and what it yes. is? So our diversity leadership conference is one of the fastest growing conferences in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. It is a two day event that promotes diversity education to help facilitate it within higher institutions like higher education, global communities, and all the sorts. And we offer various workshops within the, within the conference, such as workshops surrounding disability conversations or how to create a more inclusive syllabus as a professor, and even microaggressions when it comes to minority communities, and we also have keynote speakers. This year we are hosting Ashley Blaine Featherson Jenkins and Kevin Kreider from Bling Empire. And she, um, Ashley is actually from Dear White People. And yeah, we also have like a networking opportunity. There's gonna be an opportunity to take your headshots if you mm -hmm. don't have any. 
And yes, it's basically a way to build inclusive leaders. Perfect. And then something mainly with a lot of the organizations here, they're more student geared. And I know you mentioned earlier on how professors could have a more inclusive syllabus. Mm -hmm. um, how else do faculty or not people who aren't students, basically, how can they be uh, benefited from this leadership conference? Hmm. That's a great question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would really say that it just builds a lot of skills. And so like when you think of yourself becoming a leader and you know leaving Sam, you don't really think about the skills that you need to be that need to be built besides like you know your major. Mm -hmm. So I'm a CJ major and of course, you know, I'm learning how to read and how to do case briefs and all this and that, but like I'm not really building the work to have those interpersonal skills that I need to communicate with others that aren't like me. And so I mm -hmm. feel like this conference we build leaders but inclusive leaders. Like you can be a leader and that's good. But to be a great leader, you need to practice inclusivity. And that's what the conference is really for. Perfect. And earlier you mentioned workshops happening within the conference itself. Can you tell us a little bit more of those workshops? Yes. And so each workshop is facilitated by a professor on campus or someone who's an expert in that field. And so the workshops vary. There's about five different workshop sessions for each day because it's a two-day conference. And, you know, the topics range from, you know, like I said, like microaggressions to like invisible disabilities and like deaf culture awareness. There's so many things. And so like there's something for everyone. So whichever aspect of diversity that you think that you lack mm -hmm. in, you'll be able to find that coming to our conference. Perfect. And then this being a two, uh, two day big event, mm -hmm. you say it's one of the becoming one of the biggest ones in the state of Texas, yes. most recognizable. What all does it take to plan it all from? workshops to food to gas like how, how do you plan it all it takes a lot yeah <laughs> but it's a lot of it's a lot of talking so you know when you're planning things like this you can't just look at it but linearly you mm -hmm. have to like really talk about what do you want people to gain from the conference and so like there's a lot of work going behind the scenes about like which topics should we bring in like who which topics are going to be in the conference and which topics mm -hmm. are we gonna have to like push to the side which each topic is important in its own way but in order to really, you know, teach people diversity education, we need to bring topics that aren't really talked about. And so like, that's where diversity council comes in. You know, we handle kind of like the manual labor. You know, we also have the blind spot exhibit happening within the leadership conference. And that's an exhibit that kind of ties the entire conference together in like an art piece. And so you're able to walk through and see these different aspects of diversity and really put a picture to what you've been learning the entire day. And, you know, food wise, I don't handle that part. So I really couldn't tell you. But other than that, it's just a lot of communication, a lot of writing and a lot of heart. I would I say. <clears throat> and I know you mentioned you have two guest speakers coming in. Mm -hmm. What all and I've, I know you've guys had guest speakers before. What all does it entail to say we want this person specifically because X, Y, Z? What What's the process behind that? Well, we have a leadership committee and those are usually people who are experts in DEI work. And we usually pick people based off of their platform, basically. So Ashley Blaine Featherson, she is someone who, she's an influencer. Mm -hmm. She's been on Netflix. She is a black woman. And she talks about topics that could relate to college students. And so she's gonna be talking about her purpose versus her passion this time, or your purpose versus your mm -hmm. passion. And as college students, that's something that, you know, we believe that it would be beneficial to have someone come in and speak about. And like Kevin Kreider, he is also an influencer and a Netflix star. And he comes from a minority background. Well, he is a minority. Mm -hmm. And so that also that aspect that he can bring to the table is, you know, just having someone who looks like you speak about issues that you may be facing is also really important. And so the way we vet our keynote speakers is just by who is going to benefit the students the most, who are students going to connect with the most? And yeah, that's pretty much the basis of nice. how we pick our keynote speakers. And speaking on the topic of keynote speakers, you're a junior or senior? Senior. Senior. senior, senior, senior. senior. <laughs> so you've been here for a few years. Mm -hmm. Out of all the diversity conferences, who has been a speaker who has spoke out to you or your favorite one mm -hmm. in the past? I'm biased because I'm really looking forward to this year's keynote yeah. speakers. <laughs> so I think I'm, I, for now, I would have to say 
I'm going to say Ashley Blaine. Even though I haven't seen her mm -hmm. yet, I just know there's yeah. going to be a conversation that I'm going to really enjoy and that I'm looking forward to. What do you specifically look forward to in that conversation? Just the whole purpose versus passion conversation. I feel like as a college student, I've been going to so many counseling sessions mm -hmm. with career counselors trying to figure out what's my passion, what's my purpose. And so hopefully the insight that she gives us will help me determine what I'm going to do. Perfect. And what do you want students, because I know we've talked about faculty earlier. Now, what do you want students to get out of this conference specifically? I want them to learn something. I want everyone to learn something that they may not have known before and to be able to apply that in their community. Perfect. And with current events going on today, how do you think this will influence diversity? And then the conference, how do you think the conference will um, influence, you know, same students here in the next maybe one, two, five years from now? Yeah, I think it's going to make learning about diversity fun. I feel like whenever someone brings up the conversation of DEI work, you're like, ugh, another lecture, mm -hmm. another paper I'm going to have to read. But like a conference like this is so interactive and so engaging that you're going to want to share this with your friends and you're going to want to talk about it and make programs around that. And so, yeah. And on the topic of current events, do current events happening in our world today, does that influence in any way, shape or form what you're going to talk about in the conference or who you're going to bring on? Yes, definitely. So like, you know, with the pandemic happening and just a lot of the things that have sprouted from that, mm -hmm. a lot of the workshops and as well as the keynote speakers, we brought them in so we could address these issues and really, you know, highlight them and let people know that it's not forgotten. Like mm -hmm. we see you and we're going to help. And why is it important for Sam Houston to have this diversity conference? I think diversity is such a rising topic and something that we all should practice more often. And so especially at a school who just recently became an HSI, mm -hmm. I feel like it's super important to learn about different cultures and learn how to engage with those cultures in a meaningful way to help one another, build each other up and just connect overall as an institution. Perfect, and for those who don't know what an HSI is, what is an HSI? HSI is a Hispanic mm -hmm. Serving Institution. I don't know what categorizes that, mm -hmm. but I believe it's when we reach half the threshold of mm -hmm. Hispanic Serving Students here right. at campus, but yeah. Perfect, and can you tell me what is Step Africa? Step Africa is, it's a performance group who have mm -hmm. been here before. They came to the LSE quite a few times, but they are an African-based dancing group. They have like a drummers, a drum line, a dancing set. Um, they're just super entertaining. It's gonna be my first time actually seeing them at SAM. So really? I'm super excited, yes. but yeah. And then going forward into the semester, you know, semester's about to uh, wrap up. What else can we expect from uh, Cydia? Well, we have more chat and choose coming up, a chance for you to talk about, you know, the topic of that month, which Women's History Month, as well as Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month is coming up. And so we're going to have conversations about that, as well as, you know, we're going to be on the yard giving out T-shirts. And yeah. Perfect. Well, we all love free food and free T-shirts and good conversations for that as well. I want you to thank Micaiah again. Thank you for coming on thank to you. Around Sam. No problem. Hope to see you around here on the studio soon enough. Um, and speaking of events going on around Sam Houston today, I have a, quite a list of things going on for next week. Um, like we said, the 18th Annual Diversity Leadership Conference is happening this weekend. Um, and then coming up as well, March 1st, crawfish boil season is here. Um, you, there's a crawfish boil on Bowers Stadium from 4 to 6 on Bowers Boulevard. And on March 2nd, the day right after that, there is a community uh, march to the grave going to the Sam Houston Cemetery as well. That will start um, in the morning. And then the School of Music as well on the 2nd through the 4th will be having their 60th Annual Contemporary Music Festival. So a little bit of everything for everyone here at Sam Houston. But for now, I'll see you here next week. I've been your host, Casey Martinez.